Welcome to the StockMatter.com studio. I'm your StockMatter, Brian Johnson. And uh, yeah, sideways again today. We talked about this consolidating. Matter of fact, I think we talked about this this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> about the fact that we're coming into month end and in an attempt to maybe look portfolios look as nice as they possibly can. They may want to try to drive this up a little more and or at least uh, work it sideways, which is obviously precisely what they've been doing. Market internals are absolutely verifying this too. Everything I'm seeing on the market internals is um, validating exactly what we're seeing here, and that is a flat move. It's not up, it's not down, it's just the middle of the road. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll see if any of this can get broke. I mean, looking at the chart, you guys, I think, would obviously know what I'm watching for. Uh, as long as we stay up here and we stay sideways and we keep trying to pound our way through that 10, 850, 10, 900-ish uh, area, there's no reason to think we can't break through it at some point. I'm watching the blue line below us and this uh, little resistance line above us. Somewhere between 10,850 and 10,900 is really where I'm putting that at. So and still be very cautious in your trading and, and uh, especially in your next move. But I mean, there you have it. I don't know uh, really where else to go with that. It's pretty obvious what we're waiting for here. So as these things kind of move sideways, I'm going backwards, I want to go forwards. Here on the daily, we can see that we are putting in this little sideways motion, which is a, if you've been with me, it's a high base, that's right. And we're waiting to see if it'll actually resolve in the way most of the high bases do. Usually high bases will resolve upwards. We'll see if that happens here. There's some economic data coming out here towards the end of the week, some uh, P-O-M-O, -O. you can look that up if you want to, POMO days, if you will, maybe that has an effect on things, I don't know, I'm just watching the charts, whatever, whatever, when it happens, I'll know, it'll break these levels, and then we'll take our trade, and none of those levels have been broken yet, there really hasn't been anything to, to necessarily trade, today we, you know, we, we just touched below 10,800, and we never made it above 10,900, so, it's a walk the dog day, and here we have this high base, over here, we put in a high base, and this one resolved downwards. Will it do the same thing? You know what? Don't front run it. Let it do what it's going to do, uh, and then take your trade from that point. Breaks above 10,900. Breaks below, I don't know. If you want to go below 10,800, sure. Uh, it's more speculative, probably, uh, to go short below 10,800. Um, I would maybe wait till a break below 10,700, but uh, completely up to you. If you're looking for just an intraday trade, not a bad place to be looking for it in those areas. NASDAQ moving sideways as well. Um, here you can see us just kind of stuck um, really in limbo land as well as everything else. But holding above these moving averages uh, on the 60-minute charts, going nowhere, touching it here, retreat. Come back down, touch it, retreat. Move sideways, come down, touch it, retreat. It's really just stuck right here between this uh 2000 and 2020 area makes good sense here too if we look at the daily you can kind of see what we're looking at just a pullback that's all it is so some of the other markets are moving sideways nasdaq is moving down but come on this isn't down this is just pulling back here uh got to treat it as a pullback until we uh, see some more major levels broken for me probably 1970 1975 gives me that area there but otherwise really any run up coming right into the 2050 mark and or above here we have it on a weekly we're halfway through you can see we've gone nowhere the markets haven't been all that uh, anxious to move too far yet so decent moves to the downside but just nothing for volume. It's so flat, so boring. Be very cautious. Don't get antsy. Don't get sucked into the markets doing the sideways move. Uh, you're better off to just go ahead and wait for a much better entry before actually throwing your money at this market. Don't waste it. Once you're out of the once you're out of the market, man, that's it. That's it. You're done. You gotta wait. So don't take yourself out of the game by gambling. Just throwing money at it, hoping that it'll stick. Sometimes that works and you're the hero, but more often than not, that ends up being a very, very bad choice for, for traders, and they end up getting burned on that. SPX on a 60-minute 2, moving sideways here right into the see the 50 holding here on the 60-minute chart. 
right at the 11.50, and then ultimately for me back below 11.30, and really 11.25, I'm going to say, is probably the more safer place to get short. So 11.25 to the short side, 11.50 to the long side. I think it's pretty obvious here what's what's happening. we got this high base formation getting in here. 11.50 is really your break above level. I think you'll see a lot of shorts start to cover if we get back above that. So if you're going to do it, uh, go ahead, take a shot above 11.50. Going to want to be cautious. Going to want to set a tight stop uh, just to make sure that it actually holds. Don't get fooled on a fake out, you know. Just uh, don't don't get into the trade and not set a stop and think, oh, I'll be okay. Well, you might not. 11.70 would be the next area above that if a break of above uh, 11.50 holds. Um, 11.70, I think, could definitely be in the cards. From a weekly two here, you can see what we're doing. As long as we're above 11.30, everything's still fine uh, on the SPX markets. There's really no reason to panic there, and you can see that no, that nobody is really getting all that nervous. Uh, the VIX was up again, showing us somewhat of a divergence here. You know, I don't know. Markets down, VIX up, same type of thing we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Not going to worry about it till we really see a break either above this blue line or back below, uh, below this blue line. Uh, really back below here would would start to get me a little bit more bear, uh, bullish Sorry, on the markets itself. Showing me that clearly fear is starting to come out of the market as opposed to what we saw today. A little bit of move upwards in the VIX, but look, just nothing within here to give us any indication. So more of the same in the VIX, moving sideways, showing us that there is no real direction here by, and no tip-off at all, by even the uh, options traders. They're all pretty complacent right now. A little bit of up, a little bit of down, but overall they're really complacent. Until we start to break those upper levels, I wouldn't be too worried about everything. All right, on to Apple. Oh, let me fix that blue line in Apple. Hold on. All right, so I went ahead and added, uh, I just kind of redid a couple lines and added an extra one for you. I want to show you a couple things. Look at this. This was that huge run up, and look what Apple did once it broke that blue line. Look how it held the bottom side of it. It ran up and up and up and up and up and finally started to roll over a little bit. But this is uh, not uncommon in a very strong trend. Um, this could potentially happen to the markets as well. As we break those blue lines on the indices, maybe we see them trace the backside of these things for a while. Sometimes that's exactly how it goes, and it all depends, once again, on the strength of the trend. Now, looking at this, I wanted to show you this. <clears throat> Remember I talked about this big tail? I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's legit or not. Sure is. Um, I saw that on a couple of different uh, platforms and had a gentleman send me an uh, email about it, or a reply, actually, about it. And uh, you can see here uh, that the big tail came down. Look what it hit. Look at how cool is that. Yeah, so it, it did hit, hit an actual legit uh, trend line right down here towards the bottom <laughs> so crazy how price will bounce off these things when you know when you have the lines in the right place so as i was drawing this this line here this bigger line here i looked at that tail and thought yeah i wonder kind of looked like it might match up sure enough it did so very curious to see that it did actually plummet to 275 yesterday before that big move up this looks like that big move in the markets remember we saw this a few weeks back that big move in the markets where was, the dow was down like a thousand points and everybody's it's like a flash crash i guess they call it i call it the fat finger day somebody got a fat finger and hit the sell button or something <laughs> i don't know what happened but regardless it's the same type of a look um <clears throat> obviously did make it back down to 275 where it goes from here is anybody guess but could be consolidated looks it's just consolidating with the rest of the markets right here just consolidating with the rest of the markets if we look at the daily as long as we stay above this 285 we're really in great shape matter of fact as long as we stay above 280 we're still in really really good shape here um so this is just putting in um a pullback gotta look at it as just a pullback doesn't look like apple wants to go anywhere quite yet so we'll be cautious with that Apple on a weekly as well. It's only Wednesday, but look how we're holding above that 275, 280 ish level. So we did come back and retest 275. I showed you the trend line, which made perfect sense on a 60 minute. 275 is good for that. We'll be watching those going forward. But right now, as long as it stays above that 280 mark, I wouldn't be too concerned if you are long on Apple. FAS on a 60 minute. Consolidation as well. Same thing we've seen over the last couple days. Uh, very difficult. Once again, this is a day where it's hard to make money. There's a little spinning top 
uh, candle here. There's just, it's very difficult to know. Should I go long? Should I go short? Should I get out? Should I stay in? These days are tough, 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 tough to trade. you got to really know what you're doing in order to even stand a chance at making any kind of money in this. These are days that I stay out of the market. These are the days that my wife loves because I I get extra stuff done that she needs done. Get extra errands run. I'm not afraid to, to leave and go do stuff. <laughs> She doesn't mind these little spinning top doji days at all. <laughs> okay, so anyway, FAZ on a 60 minute, same thing. Look, we're pounding our heads against this 1340, 1350-ish area right up in here. Still not a bad trade if you want to sneak one above 1350. Speculative, yes, but, you know, might might be worth it. Give it a shot. Uh, I would say above that 1375 mark, I still kind of like that a little bit better. 1360. How about above 1360? We can get back above this little spike here. That's a little safer trade. That might get you at least into the trade before we start to hit some overhead resistance here. There is overhead resistance right at or around 1375. Obviously, be cautious of that. Above that, 14 bucks. So, which way will it resolve? anybody's guess this is a consolidation I could probably make a nice little symmetrical triangle out of this little formation here if you want to use your imagination on that point being waiting for a break one way or the other I still like below 1275 and or above 1360 1370 or so before you look at a trade here all right that'll do it for today quick and quick and easy and I'll be back with you again uh, in tomorrow night's video hopefully hopefully We'll get some movement to the market over the next couple days. Give us something to trade. See you then. Bye.